Let me exit left while Rudy goes on his uh, Dion. It, it, it's not a rant. It, it's not a rant. This is more of a... a, a, a it's going to be a rant. I gave Dion credit on one, and I agree with him, but I also have a problem with Dion. Um, the, 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 the spring transfer portal. You're the head coach. He lost 21 players since April 15th. 21, Nick. 21. And his response to and he's and and in that time they've gained four. What do you think? This guy says in multiple podcasts and whatever he's been on, in the same commentary about Cormani McLean how I wish he could have really got a chance to coach him. I think it comes a certain point where a head coach needs to learn to shut up. Just, just don't say anything. It, it's not beneficial because all it looks like is you're taking an app. You can't, you're taking an absolute dump on these guys. He's taking shits on these players. You know, he's, he, he cut all those guys last year. Fine. You did what you did. But now these guys that are transferring out are guys that transferred in last year year you built these guys up as louis vuitton and whatever you want i'm bringing louis with me i guess that was his son and travis and others who didn't even play um because there was a bunch that didn't even play and now you have him making comments about mclean after mclean leaves the comment should be simply this we wish him the best that's it no this is what Dion says. Be, study and prepare. Be on time for meetings. Show up to meetings. Understand the scheme. I check film time from each player so I can see who's preparing. So if I don't see that, you would be a fool to put somebody out there who's not prepared. Do you need to know that, Nick? Do I need to know that? So what you've now done publicly is you've, humili you've, you, you've humiliated that player. You've actually downgraded his value. Because if I'm a coach of another team, I may find that out regardless because of when we do our, they do their due diligence and they're, and they're, they're investigating and they, they speak to people and all. But why are you shitting on him publicly? Why? What, what benefit do you have to take a shit on a kid that you flipped a year ago as a, as a high school senior and say that about him? No matter what he did or didn't do, you, there's no benefit for that. It, this is a this is a parent you 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 were in that parent's house, and you told that parent you would take care of that parent that 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 kid. There's other things that he said this week, and I'm reading them off my phone because I screenshotted them because it was like he was questioned by a reporter about players leaving his program, and his response was, "I wish you guys would do a little more homework when you start talking about the portal and understand what we're losing." He's lost 21 players in, 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 eight, in nine days. One of them is um, Savion Washington, who was a starting offensive tackle last year. One of them was Alton McCaskill, who transferred in from Houston last year and was the conference player of the year and was expected to start last year. But I think he had an injury. I think he got hurt. But his now Alton McCaskill's father has – kind of need to close his mouth too because he said if my son's not starting he won't be staying type of thing and that's a problem in itself but again you also lost uh Sylvian Wilkerson and Dylan Edwards they lost their three best running backs from last season four actually because one had already transferred so you lost all your running backs and you're sitting here telling people well what'd we lose we lost nothing we're we're not losing starters yeah you uh, there's at least seven guys in that list were start who started last year at least seven that I, that I read in Colorado they're, websites. They're not starting anymore. Well, clearly they're not starting anymore, but who are they backups to? Because he makes he goes out of his way to say that we bring starters in. Well, that's a fact. That's an actual lie. That's not true. Because I've looked at every guy he's brought in from, this, from the transfer portal in the fall and the transfer portal now. One of the guys he claims is a starter had not played a second pretty much at Texas. 
He's going to be a starter. Year, he may be a starter at Colorado, but he was a non-playing backup at Texas. Did not play. And he gets two graduate-level seniors on the defensive line who combined for eight sacks, eight and a half sacks. That's what's showing up your defensive line. Yeah, those guys, one guy started, the other guy was a marginal starter. But you're not replacing these guys with superstars. You're replacing them with guys that are just like the guys you're losing. Or less. Because you've lost 21 and you brought in four. Okay? And I'm sure he'll fill up the class or whatever. He also says, we are good. I trust the recruiting team. I trust our coaches. Please have, please have some faith in me. You went four and eight last year, guy. Chill out. Faith in you. Went four and eight. You didn't win. You didn't win? What'd you win? Your line couldn't block me. That's why he that's why he had to get well, his ass. Well, but those are the same guys that he swore by last year. That's my problem with him. No, he, he said, swears he swore by so many of these dudes that were he said that he had to show up some things in his old life. Okay. Life. He also things. swore by those same dudes. The interior was a big thing. He Great. said that we, go. We're, he told y'all well, that he, he recruited those dudes. Because that's all go he could look. do at that moment. So he just brought in a backup fucking left-right tackle, and that's the guy that's sharing up his fucking line? A backup? He's yeah. not a starter. He's he a backup who ain't played. That the one from Alabama or Houston? From Texas. From Texas. Yeah. From Texas. His name is Peyton Kirkland. Okay. He added, when a guy when a guy's a starter and he transfers, you got to really think about that. I mean, is he really that? I don't know how many starters have really transferred around the country. I think we got some coming in for visits pretty soon. So your guys aren't starters, but the guys coming to you are starters? Man, stop it. Come on now. I know you have to manipulate a narrative to fit whatever you're trying to pull and push, but that's garbage. But we can attract those types of players. Why? To, to freezing-ass Colorado, where the, the population of the school is 99.9% white? Yeah, I know. Like, look at the population of the demographic of the school. The demographic of the school is white. What is attractive of that school to most black kids? It's freezing cold, and it's all white. What, what would attract you to that? Other than Dion himself, who's proven he's not really a good coach as a He's not a good coach. He hasn't he's a, proven that yet. He's proven he's not the greatest of leaders because leaders of men don't do the shit he does, um, in my opinion. And he, he says, we're I making think, I think I think he's a person that you would actually like because he holds shit accountable. Who, who does he hold accountable? He doesn't hold his own kids accountable. His own kid, his own kid, a week after. No, no. I was going to say something. Well, you know what? Those are the first two you have. The first two kids that I hold accountable when I coach Little League sports of my kids yeah. are my kids. Yeah, of course. My kids are the first two that get held more accountable than anybody else. And mm -hmm. his two kids, one who's a starting quarterback who out of high school was going to FAU. FAU. And he goes to Jackson State when Dion gets the job. He never went to FAU, but he committed to and signed with FAU. And then he goes to Jackson State. Let's be honest with ourselves once again. Honesty sucks when it comes to Dion. It's a it's a manipulated storyline. And then he also, but, but you don't keep your own kids accountable. You know what happened after he had that thing with the where it was the, the, the letter from the professor and talking about how his players don't behave and they act like assholes and blah 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 and whatever. And he and he videotapes everything to show how how little control he has over his program. His own son, the starting quarterback, goes to a class that he's not even enrolled in and is recording the class on Instagram Live, being recorded by somebody else, disrupting people in front of him, who've some couple of white girls who've never seen him before. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, Shador is here. Woo, woo, woo. You, you have so little respect for your own father that you did exactly the opposite of what he said that same week. Like, that's ridiculous. And those two are, especially Shador, like, there's nothing that holds him accountable. So he doesn't hold anyone accountable. In fact, there's a video that was on, um, on Facebook where it shows, and I know this happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I know it happens, Nick. So he's, they're blowing the whistle. The whistle's blown. And Shiloh Sanders completely lights up this guy three seconds after the whistle's blown. 
I thought you liked that. I thought you liked no. that. No. Wait, wait. You can't be a hypocrite. You, this is your teammate, Nick. I thought you liked that one, Colorado. This is your teammate. Your teammate. You don't light up your fucking teammate three you seconds don't. after the whistle's blown. You don't light up your teammate. You don't light up your teammate and then his dad celebrates it? Like dancing around, prancing around? And I made a comment on some Facebook thing about it. And I mean, the comedy of response. And I said, and what I said was, I'm a parent of a guy going to your school. And in that situation, in one of those videos, he says, I, if you want to fight, I know you guys don't want to fight, but if you want to fight, we'll stick you in a back room and close the door and drop the blinds and see who comes out. I'm a parent of a player. If something happens to my guy, my son, because of your fucking complete lack of professionalism and sense, bro, you got some shit to answer to because I'll tell you right now, if that was to happen, look, we know these guys don't really want to fight. We know this. But if he was to actually do that and someone got badly hurt, he's responsible I and think he should be arrested for it's it. More, it's more of because he said it, but I think, Rudy, I think you like that type of shit. That's I, no, I don't want to see my players fighting in, the, in, the, in a back room and someone getting knocked out and hurt badly. No, I don't want to see it. No, I want to see the like fight. It. I want to see the fake little fight with the helmet on where no one really gets hit. Okay. If you're a dumb right. fuck and want to punch a face mask, that's on you. But I'm not going to see my players and put my kids in a situation where they're going to beat each other's asses and no, now like, neither kid can play. You're you, you right. So Because because let me tell you, what, what if it was Shador? When it comes to that because I'm sure there's some players on the team that don't like Shador very much to, and want to punch him in his fucking mouth on their own team. When it comes to fighting on the team, Whatever happens on the field happens on the field. That's no, it. it. Don't go beyond the field. Once it go to the locker room, that shit, that shit's cut out. That's when it's a fucking problem. Everything it's that happens on the field, it leaves it on the fucking field. Whatever problem you I have, agree. that's it. After that, y'all getting back in the locker room and y'all fucking friends, y'all find a way to make it work. On the field, your competitive shit happens. When you get into the locker room, man, that's how you build a team. That's how you build chemistry and things in that nature. Why is Jordan? Yeah. Why is Jordan Poole no longer with the fucking Golden State Warriors? Yeah. Draymond sure. Green well, punches well, him in the face when he's not looking like a punk, and it's videotaped and it's leaked, and everyone sees it. And Jordan Poole can never play with that; he can't play with that dude no more. Because I'm sorry, what you did was punk. You you you, you cheap shot at me. I wasn't looking. At least if I'm looking and we can square up, we can well, fight. Well, but you probably still lose that fight. But when somebody walk up on you and, and y'all are had already had a disagreement, you you, you, you better get your 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 multi millionaire yeah. athletes behave. Rudy, because, I'm a fucking man is a man. And when well, a man, you know what? Draymond Green's not a man because Draymond Green's a cheap shot artist and he does it to everybody. I'm just saying, but when he does it everybody. When she get tense, you gotta get ready. Well, that's why Draymond might be gone next year because he should be gone. He should be gone. But he should be gone. That's the talent. And now finally Dion says because finally Dion says, We're different from a multitude of different teams, and you can't say what's good or what's bad. I know what works for us and what has worked for us tremendously. We pattern things like the NFL. The NFL only has several draft choices and a 53-man roster. We go about it from a free agency standpoint. Brother, go coach the NFL. My guy, go coach the NFL. Go coach the NFL. If that's how you operate, go coach the NFL. Because that's not what you're there. You're in a college. Well, what if you're trying you're to in a university. A it's not a fucking, it's not a goddamn, it's not a damn, whatchamacallit, a, a trade school. What if you're trying, you trying to get them prepared for real life in the NFL? Prepared for... That's not what he said, though. That's not what he said. And he keeps saying this dumb shit and sh shitting on guys that were on his team that he begged to come play for him last year. And he looks like a fucking clown. He looks like a clown. Now, I agree with the shit with McLean. McLean is a, was a problem. But you don't have to reveal every dark secret of your program to the world, and you do it to embarrass these guys. What? Well. That's it's embarrassing. They, that's how they program works, man. It's a no, that's he works. Because I'll tell you right now, tremendously worked. Motherfucker, you were four and eight. You were four and eight. You lost seven of your eight of your last nine. You got beaten by bad teams. I'm done. I'm trying to defend it to a certain point. There's nothing to defend, Nick. You know goddamn well that if you sent your kid to some fucking college, when you send your son Nico to go to college, and if he's a football player, and your coach, if that coach was to do some shit like that, go in the back room and have a fist fight, and your fucking kid calls you that day and says, Dad, I got my nose broken because coach sent me to the back room to have a fist fight, you're probably going to be at that school within an hour. 
wherever the, or if it's within flying distance within that same day. And don't tell me you won't because it could affect that kid, your son's career. Did you just see the huge, I think it was in Kentucky. They showed a video of two linemen getting into a bad fist fight earlier this year in the spring. And everything's recorded now. And the one guy got completely knocked out. How can you play with that dude again? Like, I'm looking to hit you with a, get you with a bat. Gotta take that L, <laughs> hold that L. You mean. already know how guys deal with L's because you know what? You know how that goes nowadays. These guys don't deal with L's. Welcome back, Disney.